Hi, I'm James Wu, one of the endocrine surgeons at the UCLA Endocrine Center. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the signs and symptoms of primary hyperparathyroidism. Now, instead of making a long list of symptoms, I think it makes more sense if we talk about the causes behind the symptoms that patients can experience. So, let's start with what is hyperparathyroidism? In short, it's when one or more of the four parathyroid glands start to make too much parathyroid hormone. The parathyroid glands are four small glands that are the size of a grain of rice when they're normal that sit at the base of the neck uh, around the thyroid. Their main job is to regulate calcium in your bloodstream. Now when there's too much parathyroid hormone, one of the first places that it causes problems is at the bones because that's the biggest store of calcium. It tells your bones, we want more calcium in the bloodstream. And in response, the bones wear themselves down to release that calcium. That causes loss of bone mineral density, leading to osteopenia, osteoporosis, possibly fractures, and can cause bony pain. Another site of action is at the level of the kidneys and the intestines. The parathyroid hormone tells these organs, we want more calcium. So the kidneys waste less calcium in the urine and the intestines absorb more calcium from your food. Overall, this raises the level of calcium in your blood. In response to that, your kidneys want to regulate that and not let the calcium get too high. So you pee more to get more calcium out. So patients will feel like they're going to the bathroom more often and as a result, they're more dehydrated and thirsty. It's not uncommon for patients to tell us that they are drinking a lot more than they used to and peeing more. In some patients, that extra calcium in the urine can also crystallize in the kidney stones, and that can cause back pain, flank pain, or painful urination. As the level of calcium rises in the blood, it can also start to have an effect throughout the body on the muscles and nerves and cause vague, subtle symptoms such as fatigue, weakness, mood alterations, difficulty concentrating, vague abdominal pain, and can even worsen heartburn. Now, it is important to mention that not all patients will have symptoms. These days, most often patients are diagnosed with primary hyperparathyroidism when they are found to have high levels of calcium on their regular blood testing. And in many of these patients, the disease has not been around long enough to cause any symptoms. If you'd like more information about primary hyperparathyroidism, about how we treat it with surgery, then please visit our website. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm James Wu with the UCLA Endocrine Center, and I'll see you soon.